Hello and welcome to the Giraffe Social Media Podcast. It's what social media managers are talking about. I'm Caitlin McKenzie and today I'm joined by some amazing members of the Giraffe team. We've got social media manager Nicole. Hello. And social media assistant Chloe. Hi. So in today's group chat episode, we're going to be talking about all things January to help you plan ahead for the new year. Yep, 2021 is upon us and now's the time if you haven't already to start thinking about how you can mix up your content in the coming months. But before we get started, it's time for our team question. So guys, what is the most Christmassy thing you've done so far this year? Well, guys, I don't mean to to show you up, but I have decided (laughs) this year to make my own Christmas cards because I wanted to get a little bit more creative. So I (laughs) bought myself like a kid's watercolor set um, and I followed these really cute tutorials on TikTok. That was like a, because I'm no artist, but they're supposed to look kind of messy and kind of cute. So for everyone (laughs) actually watching, you can (laughs) have a look at my- This is so uh, exciting my my christmas tree you know oh my, um, gosh. <laughs> my reindeer with lights with that lights. one is my favorite that one's mm. awesome it's, it's cute and i've i've done like a a gift and some candy cane type things and i haven't told any of my friends this so i'm gonna just sort of surprise them with <laughs> with that and hopefully they don't like hate the it stakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but that's how i spent my weekends Oh, that's so nice. Wow. How about you, I, Chloe? Yeah, I, f- I mean, I feel like I couldn't possibly follow on. Those cards were <laughs> the cutest. Um, the most Christmassy thing I've done this month was probably um, going out to find the perfect Christmas tree with my boyfriend. Um, we've done it every year since we moved here. It's still quite novel to be able to buy an actual tree, like a real one. Um, so yeah, I did that. Then we spent the day decorating, um, took some TikToks for it. Uh, (laughs) yeah, it was, it was really nice. That's so cute. I haven't had a real Christmas tree in so long. Um, do you have a real one, Nicole? No, I don't. Do you have a, like a, like a fake one? Mm. I was just saying you had a Christmas tree, you know, (laughs) Grinch over there. (laughs) I definitely do have a Christmas tree. Um, (laughs) I might not have one in, I mean, I said I did have one at home, home, there, sure, there is sure. a Christmas tree, but I don't actually have one in my presence right now, but I was too scared okay. to tell you guys that <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas okay. cards will make up for that. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, they definitely absolutely. do. Yeah. Good. For sure. Uh, I guess the most Christmassy thing I've done is I've done some baking, I had a little time mm. off last week and I like sort of said I'm commandeering the kitchen no one can enter and like play Christmas music <laughs> mulled myself some wine and just made a lot of gingerbread I always get really carried away and I do this thing where if I see a recipe I'm like okay well that can't possibly be enough so I just double the recipe <laughs> I have so much gingerbread it's not even real and I don't think I even perfected the recipe so it's like I have a lot of average gingerbread <laughs> just <laughs> mediocre <laughs> it's just okay um I mean uh, yeah, and I'm gonna like gift some of it. I think. <laughs> Lol. I'll, I'll send you my address Aww. after this, Caitlin. You sure, can sure. Send we can make that some my way. <laughs> and I can send some Christmas cards, guys. Oh, this is the start look of at something. you two go. <laughs> All this festive cheer. Do you know what's quite funny? I was baking. I was also making like rice krispie cakes, of course, because mm. iconic staple. Yes, um, and I was thinking, oh, I can take some of these into work, fully forgetting <laughs> this is a completely remote working environment. In fact, like, <laughs> and I've Caitlin doesn't even digital- live in the same country as. <laughs> <laughs> There is also that, yeah, I'm temporarily living in Scotland, whereas the whole most of the draft team are on the south coast of England. Um, and I've never even been into the office either, but I've just obviously so immersed myself in draft culture that I'm like, we all see each other all the time. <laughs> it's for real life. Very, very <laughs> cute. Um, okay, cool. Well, then I think it's time we can start spitballing some ideas for New Year's accent or rhyme uh, but before we maybe talk about January there is of course like the no man's land in between Christmas and New Year's which can be like quite a difficult time in terms of social media like do you post do you not post what do you post about like is are you allowed to post Christmassy stuff anymore I am very curious what your guys opinions are Nicole what are you, what are you thinking yeah it's a, a weird time and I think for a lot of businesses they usually think 
oh, I'll hold off on posting during this time. No one's really interested. You know, we're all in the festive spirit. We're all just, you know, getting drunk with our families, which (laughs) might be true. Um, But I actually think it's the perfect time to be posting because you'll have a lot of people at home, uh, particularly at this time, you know, a lot of people may have time off work or, and not to get too depressing with, with COVID, you know, if people aren't at home with their families, they will be home, you know, wanting some source of entertainment. And if they are on social media, sort of seeing those posts and ads could be a really good time for your business. A lot of people might have received gift cards this time of year. Um, so why not use that opportunity to, to post, maybe offer a little discount code if possible. Um, but I, I think it's a, it would be a good time to post. I don't think people should stop posting during that time at all. Yeah, I think I agree. And I think it's sort of like kind of a, maybe an urban myth that nobody is on mm. social during that time mm. because, I mean, I don't know if you're anything like me, but like, you know, you're off work, you're on the sofa, watching a movie, you're scrolling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Like just because we're not working doesn't mean that you're not like still engaged. Like it is just because it's a leisure place doesn't mean you know, like you're not active on it. I don't know if I'm just talking in circles there, but yeah, I completely agree. And I think you've got Boxing Day deals that you can stretch out. Um, I really love seeing people who are quite tongue in cheek post Christmas, like now it's time to get the gift that you really wanted. (laughs) Like (laughs) that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, So I agree. I think it is a good time to post. And maybe if I was going to make a suggestion, maybe think about like kind of content that is quite like, maybe like, calming like sort of mindfulness stuff maybe like because Christmas is different this year like usually people like get really burnt out at Christmas because they're running around to like every party or like having to satisfy all these family members and stuff but maybe like finding content that can be how to de-stress in this time or how to like Mm. focus use this time to focus on yourself or like you know what I mean maybe it's like some mini projects or something I think that it could be quite a nice time uh Chloe what do you reckon yeah, I think off the back of that, it's also important to remember like not to burn yourself out at Christmas when you're trying or that no man's land where you're trying to think of things to post. I think a lot of people are quite, uh, it's a great time to sort of post more personable kind of content like pictures and you'll see this coming soon on the giraffe social media, but pictures of any like office decorations you have or even like what your team's like home decorations look like. If, mm. you know, in a non-COVID world, you go out to a team dinner, like that sort of stuff works really well. It's not hard to come up with or think of and it's always going to perform well because people love, you know, the festivities that this like time of year brings um so yeah I think it's definitely as you say important to post because if not a lot of people are that just means more of an audience for your content um but yeah I mean don't don't like think too hard about it it doesn't need to be like game changing uh you could even just post teasers about what's to come in 2021 get people excited get people engaged um yeah (laughs) no I think that's really nice advice okay so then thinking about the new year I have a question are New Year's resolutions cancelled? Because I feel like they could be. Maybe I'll start off with my 10 cents. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think it's a different kind of year, right? Like, I don't know if going hard with like, what's your New Year's resolution going to be, especially if you're sort of situated in like the health or the food or the beauty industries, like reinvention isn't really relevant in my opinion. Like I'm not... Um, I don't know I I don't think 2021 is the year to be thinking about maybe like completely changing your life and things like that because people are still just trying to get by I don't know Mm. maybe that's just me but um yeah what do you guys think yeah I think you're right I mean people are always going to be a bit more impressionable during January just because you you know people do still want to believe in you know, it's the month to set goals and and reinvent yourself. So I think there's definitely something there that you could post about, but maybe, you know, we need to change the way we go about it. So instead of saying like, you know, you need to change your entire appearance, it could be more sort of offering something rather than saying you need to take something away, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the key is to be just sort of sensitive and relevant to what's going on in the world at the moment. I think we all sort of realized in March that we had to shift gears in in terms of our content and just be very wary of the situation and and what's going on. Uh, And I think now 
in our last episode, we were talking about a lot of the Christmas ads and how relevant they are to sort of what's going on at the moment. So I think in the new year, just being cautious of like what we've all been through. And I really liked your idea, Chloe, of sort of things that we can not not take um, but give. I've completely lost track of my train of thought there on what you were, <laughs> how you said it, but it sounded great. Um, but yeah, I think just being sort of a little bit sensitive to the situation and sort of talking about how your pro if you do have a product or something, how that can improve things for other people or giving, you know, all mm. of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think you guys have tapped into something super nice, like suggesting news resolutions that are maybe like learning a language or saving five pounds a week do you know what I mean like just making things mm -hmm. really small and achievable because mm. I feel like everyone is a bit burnt out at this stage and you should like so you have to be sensitive to that like people aren't they don't have a lot of capacity left whether they're working or whether they're not working like I feel like the world is stressed right now for very clear <laughs> reasons and yeah I think if you can suggest something like nice and small and doable then I think yeah news mm -hmm. resolutions are um aren't cancelled yeah you guys have changed my mind <laughs> <laughs> so of course in January there's lots of like big trends of course every year a lot happen all the time some are kind of new um veganuary is really growing traction like every year um and I think that's something quite key to tap into especially if you are in any way related to it then I think it's quite cool do you agree I think so it's just occurred to me actually that um not necessarily veganuary, but I went vegetarian kind of at the end of last year. And then the veganuary, veggie January, I think mm. there was kind of a variation. <laughs> you can do either, I think, yeah. Yeah. And that kind of like really, I was like, okay, like let's keep it going through January. And I've been vegetarian pretty much ever since. So wow. it's, there's definitely something to it. I hadn't really thought about it until we just started chatting. But mm. yeah, I think it's kind of cool to be part of a larger movement and I think 2020 then probably 2021 is a big year for movements like that so mm. yeah I think that kind of you know helpful or like sustainable resolutions that are part of a bigger picture as opposed to you know step up your beauty game like <laughs> it's a bit more <laughs> a bit more important mm. yeah no I definitely agree um I think there's it can maybe be broader than people think it's maybe just like you say, there's been a bigger push towards like sustainability. And um, I know mm. we, as an agency, we're working with like lots more sustainable brands, which is so exciting. Um, but even if you aren't necessarily like food related, like you can maybe repurpose it and wiggle your way into the conversation because everyone's going to be talking about like veganuary or veggie January um, and stuff for like climate reasons, for lifestyle reasons. So yeah, I think if you can get involved in that, by all means and I think it could be quite a nice opportunity to post like team content so like if there's mm. a member of your team doing it it could be a nice opportunity to introduce your audience to more members of the team um maybe it can be like a challenge that you set as an organization maybe it's like help let people know about your company culture yeah, yeah. I think that's an idea spring cleaning is another one if you haven't already considered mm. about posting about spring cleaning I know it sounds really cliche and like go and dust your shelves but it's a bit it goes a bit broader than that I think um do you guys have any ideas of like how businesses could maybe incorporate like the freshness of a new year yeah I think spring cleaning is like one of those really broad ones where almost anyone can kind of manipulate it to fit you know mm -hmm. their business whether that's like kind of like a mindfulness app and you can sort of do a spring clean of your especially after COVID you know spring clean of your mental health you know start the new year with a fresh mind a fresh sense of optimism um so yeah I think that's a really good one for businesses to kind of wiggle their way into mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I think just looking at these really popular trends and how you can maybe do it a little bit differently and, and change things. So there's obviously like Blue Monday, like can you do a anti-Blue Monday and sort of switch that and, and make things a little bit more positive and anything you can do, like we've already discussed with the new year resolutions, like how can you sort of just switch that a little bit so it's a bit different because, you know, we can all agree that these are great trends, but they're also incredibly popular. So how can you stand out and make your content a little bit more unique to your brand um I think that'd be really a really good thing to look at yeah I love that I think positivity is key like if there's one theme mm. or trend that you're going to get involved with 
is positivity like spread a little love mm. like um not to quote the john lewis christmas ad but <laughs> there i go um <laughs> but like yeah like you say blue monday mm. january blues like they're a real thing and um i think if you can do something even if it's just posting a cute puppy pic I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm sure mm. there's like a way or like maybe a little joke, like a weekly pick me up, something like that. I think mm. it it's good to think outside the box. You don't have to just post about your products or your service. You can bring stuff yeah. into people's lives. Okay. So I feel like we've talked about a few fun trends people can talk about, but I feel like 2021 is a bit of a unique year and there's maybe some trends to avoid that are like part of the usual new year new me rhetoric that is maybe just a bit like out of date I don't know like what do you guys think are you looking forward to seeing like the new year new me like lose the lockdown weight posts I am not <laughs> no and I hadn't even thought about it until we started recording and now I'm filled with just dread just <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I think like I want to speak for the people here like I don't have the capacity at the moment to watch all these fitness people being like come on guys mm. like I think people just need to I don't know like now's not the time <laughs> yeah like come on guys we're just trying to get through this we don't need to thrive <laughs> exactly yeah I guess it goes back to sort of just being sensitive to the situation, right? And I'm hoping a couple of brands will maybe switch their messaging a little bit, uh, but who knows? I'm just looking forward to like the January sales because that's usually a thing, right? So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for that. <laughs> Do you know what? I think they're going to be quite like big this year. I think a lot of retailers, if you consider how mm. much of the country has been like shut down in the usual Christmas shopping period, I feel like people are going to be looking to recoup in January and yes. try and like claw back some performance so definitely a good time to get involved <laughs> with all of that as a consumer and probably as an advertiser um mm. I'm wondering like I feel like a consi uh, just a thing to throw in there maybe as like a general tip slash talking point is a like, consistency I think a lot mm. of businesses are gonna drop the ball in January I feel like you see it a lot people think Christmas is the most important thing we just need to big push of the year and then oh we'll just go back to boring content in January like it will just sort of peter away I mean they put that isn't the thought process but it's not January is not a priority for a lot of businesses it's their downtime whatever I think if you are on social media I don't think you should stop especially if you've built a bit of an audience and a bit of attraction in um you like maybe your numbers are going up because you're posting more because you're pushing towards Christmas you're still going to be performing well in the algorithms of all those people you've reached and I think it's such a waste to just lose that whereas I think people should really like keep continuing stay consistent and um try and like add something new to what they're doing potentially do you guys agree or do you think January people should have an eight <laughs> yeah definitely I think January should be used as a time to try out new things you know I mean there are lots of features coming out seems like every day on Facebook mm. and Instagram at the moment and all the other platforms. So why not use that time to, to test out some new ad formats? Um, you know, look at your audiences. Is there anything new you can do there? Um, Instagram guides is a new feature that recently came out. Can you upload any sort of new year guides for yeah. <laughs> stuff? Or I know we just talked about resolutions, so maybe not that, but <laughs> anything fun that you can put on there like an influencer takeover adding their own guide like I think all that kind of stuff is fun so you're completely right I think some people are so focused on getting through Christmas and New Year's which is completely fair um but thinking about how you can start the new year with something new and fresh is definitely really important yeah I'm really curious you guys what do you think about Instagram guides because they are new and I think the jury is still out I know Chloe is um our in-house influencer <laughs> um <laughs> at weekend views so i'm curious like will you maybe be mixing it into your content i mean it's it's just a new thing isn't it yeah i can't lie i probably won't i know i was very quick to jump on reels and i did see like some really like incredible feedback from that i think i gained like a thousand followers in just a few weeks from one reel 
But to be honest, like, I think that guides just seem a little pointless at this stage. And I know I complain about Instagram on the daily, but (laughs) like Instagram has so many issues with content creators and just users in general as is. Um, So I think them just kind of feeding us with a lot of features that no one really asked for Hmm. hasn't done them any favors. And that's not to say that reels are pointless, uh, not reels, sorry, guides are pointless and can't be utilized really well. Um, because Instagram really does favor people who want to jump on, you know, their new features. So I think mm. if you're a brand or someone looking to build uh, like a following or a brand, now's a really great time to sort of utilize those features. But I think from, I guess, an influencer perspective, I would rather they just fix the algorithm and stop trying <laughs> to sell me reels and sell me guides and all that jazz. <laughs> I think guides might be best used as, because I know you can put, you can like attach different posts on your feed into a guide. So using it as like a, what would you call it? Like, I don't know, you put a couple of posts together and have that as a guide in itself. Mm. So let's say- Like a curation. Imagining, yeah, absolutely. So an influencer has posted a couple of different fashion posts. They could put that all together and say like, mm. this is my favorite, my favorite looks from October or November, December. Uh, and then same with products like a Christmas gift guide, like just popping in their posts into one section, I think could be really cool. And then you can share that. I think in my head, that's the only, hmm. that's the best way to use it because I don't think blogs really have a place on Instagram because hmm. I mean, I don't know, would you guys go onto an Instagram page and read a blog? I'm not too sure. Like on the page or like linking away? In the guide itself. Oh yeah. Hmm. On I think I, I would. I think I would because yeah. that's how I I was marketed it. I'm not sure if it was from Instagram or someone posted about it somewhere, mm. but they said, oh, Instagram guides are basically like blogs for Instagram. And that got me excited because mm. I don't really, like there's so many different platforms. I don't, I want it all in one place, which I think is what Instagram's trying to get at. But yeah. it's it really is just, you can put a photo in and add a caption. So yeah. I, I have a mm. whole timeline mm. of users for that. So I think if it was like long form blogs, I'd be a little bit more interested in subscribing. Yeah. Would you have like a roundup at all, Chloe? Yeah, I think I would. Well, that's the thing. Like I post sort of like outfit roundups of the month um, mm. I, have, well, I have for the past two months, but I hadn't really considered using it as a, gu- as a guide. Um, so maybe that's something I'll sort of trial for the December, January period and, and get back to you all. <laughs> Ooh, watch this space. I think you just gave me an idea then. I think obviously like this sort of time of year, like coming into January, February, people do tend to have like a bit of a content drought. Like maybe that all their budget was for Christmas. Um, Mm. So now they're trying to like make something out of maybe what they have. Maybe guides could be quite a cool way to repurpose content that you've already posted, like bring it together in a way. Like maybe if you were a brand and you partnered with an influencer and they did a couple of shots and you posted them a little bit all over the place, you could bring them all together and like be like, our partnership with X sort of thing Mm, mm. or um yeah have a look back through the archives and see how you could pull it all together because I think like you said Chloe like Instagram loves people who love Instagram (laughs) so if you're Mm. early adopters are always rewarded I mean come on reels now like it's basically the Instagram reels app right like I always get stuck in in reels (laughs) I'm like I go to post something I click where the post button used to be hit the reels button and then I'm lost (laughs) the day the day is gone (laughs) Um, Mm. and I also feel like I get served I don't know if you guys get this I'd be really curious to find out but in my reels feed like I get served relevant content but then I also get served really irrelevant content from like people I don't follow and also like the reels themselves only have like a handful of likes and stuff so it's just like a random person's posted a reel and I'm seeing it which seems really really weird because I'm active on Instagram I'm giving them enough like data to (laughs) find me relevant ones but I think it's it reminds me of like using Instagram way back in the day and you see that random content from like really small users so I think it like highlights an opportunity but also highlights maybe like a little gap in the algorithm because I'm like why am I watching this (laughs) what like and it's like literally really random low quality content and how am I being served this over like reels that my friends have made maybe I don't know maybe I'm like dwelling too much on this but I do think it's interesting and I think (laughs) if you use these new Instagram features Instagram will probably give you a pat on the back and a boost 
Mm. which I think that's what January is all about really like I think after Christmas no one wants you shoving more products down their throat like I think people have just spent however much money in a year where not everyone has the money to so the last thing they want to see in January is more of your you know buy this buy that so I think it's a good time to get experimental especially if you're one of those people who don't really know what to post in January just give all like give it a shot try see what works best you know it's it's a nice alternative a bit of a breather for people who you know have gone from black friday to boxing day to you know whatever else yeah for sure and like the stakes are a bit lower right your christmas yeah. performance doesn't dwell mm. on how good your content does in january so maybe that could be your moment to try some new things um and i also kind of think from an ads perspective that ads could potentially be a little bit cheaper i mean i could be wrong because of, mm, I, I do kind of think, because you always get it, like the higher the demand, the higher the cost of like your ad bid. Mm. So if there's going to be a bit of a cliff edge with people, everyone's advertising right now, like my social media is a flood of ads and obviously we're running lots and lots mm. for our clients um, and that is going to fall off a cliff and hopefully so should the price. So if you can <laughs> spare a little budget, I think do some testing, see what works. You could find mm. some really like, cool learnings to take forwards into like the rest of the year when you do have like valentine's day pushes or the big summer push like the future deadlines Hmm. cool well i guess we can finish up with our key takeaways so if we had to boil this episode down in a nutshell and say like one thing we wanted the listener to take away what would it be nicole what is your key takeaway for our group chat today Oh, I think it would be not to forget the time between Christmas and New Year, making sure you're still posting content, get it all done early um, and just using it as a time to just benefit of everyone being on their phones over Christmas because people will be shopping still. You know, it doesn't it doesn't end after Christmas. So definitely just making the most out of that time and getting your content all all prepped for then. Nice. I think my key takeaway would be think about how you can bring value to your like your Mm. audience in January like can you offer them some sort of discount can you serve them some content that's going to be a mood booster that's going to break up maybe other content on their feed like I don't know again with the puppy picture (laughs) Um, (laughs) like we just want pictures of puppies (laughs) yeah that is what social media was invented for right (laughs) um or maybe a giveaway or something just like how can you maybe teach your audience something new or just make them a little bit happier and give them something to be excited about. I think every business or brand has something to offer. And I think have a little think about what that is you can provide. How about you, Chloe? Do you have a key takeaway for us? Yeah, I think kind of ties in with what you've both said, but use that downtime between Christmas and the New Year's to really strategize uh, January. I know, as we've pointed out through the podcast, a lot of people kind of forget about January and what they can do with the time. So, you know, take this time to explore uh, Instagram guides, Instagram reels, you know, take a look at any new trends that are upcoming and um, really use it to your advantage. Well, guys, I think that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you to everyone at home for listening along. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode. You can also connect with us on all major social channels and let us know what you thought about today. Do you have any fun ideas for the new year? Please share them with us. We'd love to hear them. We've been Giraffe Social Media. You've been amazing. We'll see you next time.